You just told us about a half hour, an hour after the match. Let's say now the next day I'm off. I've got maybe two days off or a day off. And then what should I be eating that day for recovery? Should I go to the proteins like steak, like you said well, before? Well, you could you could have slightly larger protein portions because you won't be having to immediately go and train um, for a match or play for a match. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't go crazy on protein because again, you want to be kind of in a similar diet routine. In fact, there shouldn't be a huge, huge variation between a playing day and a non-playing day, but the okay. diet consistency, training diet consistency is important. And this is something I find that's quite different with players, and they don't realize that they're doing it differently. Um, I'll have players log their training days and their non-training days, and there's usually huge differences in calories. And your off day is your rest day, and it's your day to kind of fuel up. Now, that doesn't mean overeat, right. but replenish what you need to get in and get ready to burn the next day. Okay. So getting in the carbs and getting in maybe a red lean meat protein and maybe just a slightly bigger portion, maybe two thirds of what I showed you earlier. So not too heavy that you're loaded down and feeling heavy the next day. The, right. bat, the downside of the way Americans eat, and unfortunately a lot of junior tennis players are, are going to be exposed to this at restaurants. Right. We, we supersize portions, we supersize meat portions much bigger than most of these kids need. In fact, I would say most of these kids, particularly female players, should be probably splitting meals with their parents. Um, now, some of the young growing boys do need the full portions of their of their meals, but a lot of times we're getting much bigger portions than we need with the dining out portions. So okay. adding extra vegetables on the side, finishing your carbohydrate type portion, but maybe not always finishing the meat portion. That's something that we often get over served at restaurants. Sure. How about sauces, like sauces on the meat, sauces on the pasta? What's well, your take on that? Well, since Italian's a common uh, sport nutrition choice, tomato sauces again because of the saltiness and their right. vegetables and that's actually very low fat that's a good idea as long as it doesn't upset the junior's stomach um, alfredos are really rich in fat in fact i wish i had a tube on that one um, a typical <laughs> yeah. dining out restaurant portion alfredo pasta has 100 grams of fat wow and a typical junior tennis player needs about 60 to 80 grams of fat in the whole day that one Entree wow. choice already has 100 grams of fat. Wow, so that's really yeah. going to take a long time because yeah. fat's the slowest to digest, right? It's the slowest to digest, okay. and so it's going to be more dense, and it's going to possibly um, cause them to be lethargic the next day. Okay. And, and potentially, if they were eating that way a lot, like putting lots of cheese sauces, cheese toppings, thick white cheeses, thick creamy dressings like blue cheese and Caesar and ranch, always using those kind of things, that potentially is heading down a road towards giving your body a lot more than it needs and possibly causing weight gain. Right, sure. Well, let's go into weight gain because what about some of the juniors who just have weight issues, especially the young girls are, you know, maybe 10 or 15 pounds overweight and now we've got all these carbs, you know, they're eating all these carbs and doing all these, how the, is... The, the key on that, and I think I alluded to this earlier, is the importance of spreading the food out evenly. A bigger breakfast that fuels them up, okay. you know, something like a bagel with maybe a tablespoon of peanut butter. Cream cheese? A yogurt and No fruit. cream cheese. You, well, you did, it, you did it, you just went right past the cream cheese. A little I bit of cream that. cheese is okay, <laughs> but peanut butter is actually a little bit better because that's more of a, a an unhydrogenated or an unsaturated fat. So okay. that that's actually a little bit better for them. Easier um, to judge to digest. Easier to digest, okay. more heart healthy, okay. just more of an essential oil, whereas cream cheese is a non essential okay. type of fat. It's an animal fat. We don't need it as much, but a small amount is, is perfectly fine okay. for a young growing junior. Okay. So that peanut butter on the bagel, a fruit, a yogurt, something like that, whereas maybe in the past they were just lucky to get out the door with maybe a granola bar. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I right. hear that a lot. That's not enough probably, no, right? No, that's okay. not enough. Then they're in a uh, deficit. Uh, they're in a deficit. And then rather than just having a salad for lunch that they're getting that sandwich in for lunch with the low fat side versus the chips, you know, maybe pretzels versus the chips. So kind of right. building up their energy, but then they could tone the portions down at dinner. Okay. And that might be where they're maybe doing half of the portion they previously were. Okay. But also maybe they're trying to fit a couple of snacks in there. Maybe they, they put in another yogurt at a snack or string cheese and a fruit at a snack and, and maybe even half of an energy bar. If, if an athlete's trying to lose weight, maybe they do half of a carbohydrate energy bar for, before they play versus the full energy okay. bar, that kind of thing. So th those are just examples of, of diet changes I might make on a female junior tennis player who's trying to lose a little bit of weight. Right. And then we got the flip side, you know, a young growing male who seems to be underweight, can't seem to put on the weight. I see quite a few of those too. I would want them to maybe have two bagels in the morning or bagel and cereal. I'd want them to have mm. two sandwiches at lunch. Wow. I'd want them to maybe have another bagel and peanut butter at a snack or maybe one of the, the protein carb energy bars where they get a little bit of extra protein. They'll need a little right. bit of extra protein, not tons extra protein. Okay. I might want them to have two cups of pasta at night. So it might literally be double what the female player needs who's trying to lose weight. Right. Calorically. 
Um, calorie ranges, I get this question a lot, and it obviously needs to be individually determined, and that's where a dietitian comes into play in assessing the athlete's needs. But just to give you ranges, I, I try not to go below 1,700 calories for a female who's active and training okay. to meet their minimum calorie needs, but their actual needs may be anywhere from 2,200 to 2,800 calories a day to maintain their weight. Okay. A young male player may have a minimum baseline of about 2,800 to maybe 3,500 calories to maintain their weight, four, five, four to 5,000 to gain weight. Okay. So it's a lot of food. Yeah, so right. That's where the double portions come into play for weight gain. So okay. Quite a difference in those two extremes. Okay. So the breakfast, if I understand correctly, the breakfast is the biggest, the lunch is the second, and then the, then the dinner is the well, smallest. For the weight management, for somebody that's trying okay. to, t you know, lose a little bit of weight, okay. come down, lose a little bit of body fat, kind of curbing the portions down. But it, I would okay. also base it on their training and where they have their heavier training. I might put that bigger meal um, spaced appropriately time to digest before their heaviest training time too. Okay. So if they have a heavier training time in the late afternoon, let's say after school, I might have lunch be a little bit bigger. I see. So they yeah. so, so lunch may be the biggest meal of the day. Actually, okay, that because that's right before they right. train. Well, it's, okay. it's adequate time for them to be eating pregame before they play. Okay. There's so much information. This is I appreciate you you sharing this yeah, with the audience. This yeah. is this is great. I know everyone's enjoying this. Is there it's there's a lot to this. Obviously you've studied this for many years and you're an expert at it and you're consulting some of the biggest players in the world, literally. Is there a way that um that the junior players and the parents can actually get in touch with you or get sure, go on sure. a website I, or you have I, a product. I have a website okay. and it's pretty easy to remember and, and we're here in Atlanta so I think remember I'm from Georgia. Okay. It's Nutrifit G A so N U T R I F I T G A dot com. Nutrifit G A dot com. G A dot com. And I've actually got a bunch of downloadable articles on my website that oh, I've great. done. I've written for the USTA um, that they can just download. They okay. go to the, the NutraSport part of my website, and I have a lot of tennis stuff. And then I actually also have a um, player and coaches manual that I've developed now, and I've got 45 modules. They're all one-page modules that are on a lot of the topics we talked about today, and that's great. actually mentioned on my um, main homepage, and you can kind of click on that and find out how to order that. Okay. You can order the whole manual, or you can just order a topic you're interested in. You can see the topic list. There's a downloadable topic list. And so there's a lot of these things that, that I talk about a lot, and I've just gone ahead and put it into a, a handout kit or manual for players to be able to, just to be able to have these topics ready to read and it's something that might be good to take to a tournament or when they're traveling to be able to look up these different things. Sure, yeah, that's fantastic. Great. Sure. Any other any other advice that you would give to especially parents that you know how junior tennis is, parents get in, their kids get excited or you know, the child that's real excited and all of a sudden they're in this world they've never played before, they're not <laughs> sure. There's a lot of crazy people around, you know, just uh, having fun with the whole experience. But there's, yeah. there's, you know, there's not a lot of expertise among people that are brand new in anything, right? What would be the best advice you could give these new parents coming into maybe, the maybe twofold sport? That, that you, a lot of the foods that you heard me talk about today. I mean, think about packing a food cooler for your child when you take them to their tournament, so okay. that you don't get in the situation where there's a rain delay and there's not food available for your child. Okay. That you're prepared with these different things I've talked about as backups, like the sport foods, particularly sport beverages, and the snacks that are easy and quick to digest, and you kind of scope out the restaurants in that area and see what has the sandwiches or what might have the pasta meals or the Mexican type things to replenish. Okay. Um, for a parent who's dealing with a child who might be overweight, because I see a lot of that, sure. not to panic and not to push your child into a diet too fast. I mean, sometimes a lot of these kids are going to grow out of this and the activity is going to balance it out. Right. Um, and to, to tell your child that they need to lose weight quickly when they're in the midst of a competitive season can really turn them down the wrong road fast. I okay. see a lot of kids and elite players who've ended up with disordered eating problems, and it, okay. it ultimately can take them out of tennis, and obviously a parent doesn't want to do that. So um, just being patient and, and getting your kid good educational information and hopefully non-bad diet information that will give them good concrete basic fueling information that we've talked about today. So again, maybe visit my website. The USTA Player Development also often has information on their website. And now both the WTA and the ATP Men's Tour, I'm writing a column for the ATP Men's Tour called Form and Fitness, and I have some of these same kinds of tip sheets on their website. Okay. And the WTA is now starting to post uh, a monthly column also written by different sport nutritionists I contributed this month on one on tournament travel. So it's some of the things we were just talking about with eating on the road. Okay. So a lot of these websites now have resources for players. I'd encourage the junior players to go to both the WTA and the ATP websites too. Yeah, that's great. There's so much great information we never had when yeah. we were playing. I wish we had right? Yeah, we, <laughs> we would have been probably better, uh, def definitely better players. Well, this has been yeah. great. Paige, thanks so much You're for taking welcome. time to talk Thank to you. us. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, this has been great. Well, you guys have heard it. This is uh, Paige is the expert at this.
and I would go back, if I were you, and, and re-watch this particular video. I'm going to watch it again myself and take some serious notes, and then go to Paige's website, which, can you give them the website one sure, more time? Sure, it's NutriFitGA, N-U-T-R-I-F-I-T-G-A dot com. Okay, NutriFitGA dot com. We're going to have a link on the website, so you'll be able to go to Paige's website. Download these articles, study this stuff, you guys. Very important stuff. Paige, thanks again. Thank you. This is Steve Siebel for the JuniorTennisShow.com. Thanks for watching.